Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a voiceover. Yeah, it's probably been like two years since I've created one of these. But either way, I figured it's a good opportunity since I went in and actually addressed the STN issue within the 300 gallon reef. If you guys haven't seen the previous video, I will link it in the description and probably put it in the comment section. But either way, I went ahead and addressed those two spots where I was having STN the top of Barney core, which you guys can see me working on now, as well as the one that's actually on a frag rock at the very bottom of the tank. And uh, yeah, so that previous video, I talked about why I was having some STN and now we're in here and we're gonna take care of it. So as you guys can see, I am fragging up this Barney coral. I'm in there with my bone cutters, just taking off frags one by one. Now this is the less aggressive approach. It kind of allows me to get in there and just do even cuts. Now, if you haven't used bone cutters before on Acropora, if it's not like a thin little bird's nest that you can kind of just cut through evenly, go ahead and add a little bit of pressure on the bone cutters and then just twist it a little bit. It will break off right where you are pinching it. It's a lot better than getting in there and kind of crunching on the coral and squeezing as hard as you can just for it to kind of ricochet or I don't know, maybe ricochet isn't the word, but kind of um, the shock wave of cutting through a coral kind of goes through the entire colony. Sometimes you end up breaking off a bunch of corals that you don't want to. Sometimes you end up knocking the rock over. Either way, just get in there and put a little bit of pressure, give it a tiny bit of a twist, and it'll break off every single time. It does not matter how thick the acropora is, it works every single time. So with that said, going in here and I am taking care of the Barney Coral, kind of getting it completely off the rock structure. I know that I mentioned before that I might leave a little bit there, but I figured I'd go ahead and just pull it off all now, give it some time to kind of, uh, I wouldn't say heal over, but at least let some of the algae and kind of just the tank, I don't know, naturally grow over where I removed all this coral. And then I'll go ahead and put a piece back in its place. So you guys have probably noticed by now that the rock structure itself is actually moving quite a bit as I'm cutting this coral. Now, if you're wondering why it's doing that, uh, when I originally built these rock structures, I have acrylic dowels uh, through them. I, if you guys saw the setup on the 300, what, we're at five or six years ago, I think it was in 2017. I don't know, it's been a little while, but either way, um, I went ahead and added acrylic dowels through here and just over time, they've kind of loosened up. The glue isn't as stable as it once was. It's definitely not going to fall apart or tip over. It's just kind of, it kind of wobbles around a little bit. And uh, back when it was really full of coral, you would notice when the power heads would kick in in like a wave mode or a pulsing mode that the rock structure itself would actually move. It was interesting to see, kind of nerve wracking at the same time, but either way, no worries, it's not going to fall over, it's just fine. But uh, yeah, for this angle, you can see that a lot of the dead underneath that Acropora, you can definitely see where it was STNing for quite a while off the bottom rock structure. And uh, removing this colony was definitely a good call. Okay, now that I've removed the colony, I'm gonna go in here and try to remove uh, some of the dead skeletal structure that was left behind from all that STN over all that time. So this colony was actually pretty deep in the rock structure. All the stuff that I'm removing now, it was the coral itself, um, but again, it STN'd over time, eventually turned into rock. So here we are trying to remove it. And now I figured I'm gonna do this so I can open up that space again to put another chunk back in there so when it grows, it kind of fills in the spot. Now, uh, over time, I guess we'll kind of see, you know, over the next couple weeks, how this area fills in. I know that the acropore that you can see to the bottom right is actually growing up towards the bottom of that. And between the green slimer and that acropora, there's not really gonna be a ton of room in the middle there. So I'm debating on just kind of leaving it open and letting those two colonies grow together. Plus there's the two in the front, the acropora right there where the bone cutters are. And then the one at the very bottom uh, right there's what, one, two, three, four, five Acropora in that one area. So adding a sixth one might not be necessary just because again, they are gonna grow together and potentially cause death and STN down the road. So we'll see in the next couple of weeks, I might add another coral there and I might just leave it alone. But either way, let me know what you guys think. Should I put a uh, Acropora in its place? Should I leave it open, letting those corals grow together? Or should I add something a little bit different to kind of mix it up? Let me know in the comment section and uh, we'll, maybe we'll throw it up for a vote. Okay, now that we've completely removed the colony, it's time to frag this up and save as much of it as we possibly can. Again, this is a business, guys, so my goal is to save as much coral and to reduce the death or possible issues with colonies just because, well, it's my bottom line. It's what keeps my lights on. It's what feeds my kids. So 
Uh, when it comes to removing colonies, it's not like I can get away with just throwing a piece of it away and just being like, oh, well, that's too hard to frag or it's too large or it's just not the right shape like a lot of people do. Uh, for me, uh, every little piece counts and every little piece can potentially grow out to even be a colony, which can in turn make me more money down the road. So with that said, this colony, yes, it's pretty stressed out with the STN. So you'll see me in here uh, cutting off some chunks just to remove STN. Now, uh, I get a lot of questions when it comes to how far up should I cut from the STN? What can I get away with? Well, uh, if your water parameters are stable and you're not getting any ma major fluctuations with your alkalinity, you can cut about a half an inch above an STN on a frag and nine out of 10 times it will heal just fine. Now, granted, you don't throw it in a frag tank that has a ton of par stressing the coral out or too much flow, you know, just kind of make the environment as welcoming as possible. But when it comes to cutting an STN, I try to do a half an inch to an inch above the current STN. That way, um, you know, that dead uh, skeletal skin or whatever bacteria might be causing or whatever issue might be causing it uh, in the first place has less chance of making it kind of to the uh, rest of the frag. So it's kind of like when you're uh, getting coral in, most people like to cut the uh, frag uh, base off or the frag plug off because that's where a lot of the pests and parasites live in. They live on the frag plug, they live at the skeletal base. So uh, it's kind of the same thing with ST and you want to cut off that dead stuff, removing a majority of the issues and then put the frag in a welcoming area of your frag tank and uh, giving it chance uh, to uh, you know heal up and potentially uh, grow and survive. Now, I will say, uh, since I put these frags in the tank, and you guys will see both uh, kind of like, I do two sessions of frags here, um, I only lost three out of all of them, so I think that's pretty good ratio. I didn't really count how many I got, but uh, losing three is not horrible, considering, in fact, the whole colony was eventually going to die if I just left it there. So um, business-wise, again, it was a good decision. Um, I love the coral, but again, it's, it's just, you know, these are the decisions we have to make uh, as a business owner, right? So uh, with that said, uh, lo losing three frags, everything else is doing fine. Yes, they will be for sale at some point, but they got to heal up. As you guys know, I don't like to cut things and putting up on the website anytime soon. Usually I cut them, give them two to four weeks to kind of encrust, get on the frag plug and, um, you know, they do their thing and they're healthy to survive shipping. So with that said, uh, pretty successful when it came to removing the barney coral, um, kind of bummed that I removed it and the tank looks just a little bit more empty. It's kind of me bringing me back to the big birthday days with her destroying colonies, but hey, it's part of the process. And uh, either way, pretty happy with the, with the outcome of it. So let's go ahead and move on to the Acropora at the bottom. I definitely am not able to save a lot of this, but I do manage to get a few chunks of it and put it back and hopefully it will grow out again. So let's go ahead and move over and I'll show you guys that. All right, so as you guys can see, this colony is not doing very well. Now, uh, that's just on the top. If you look underneath, you can see there's a crap ton of STN everywhere. Um, I probably waited too long to actually remove this and do the fragging. I think I could have saved more of it if I did it probably two weeks ago, but I guess it's better late than never. I was able to actually uh, save a decent chunk and glue it back in its same spot or the original spot. Now, I did adjust the position in the 300 for these colonies because some of you guys might be wondering, well, if it's already destroying a colony that you took several months to grow out, why would you put a piece back in its spot and then have it happen again? Well, I like to have corals grown out in the bottom of the tank and I don't have any more room in the 300 to actually grow any colonies on the rock structure. Uh, so it's kind of the only option I have. I can minimize the stress by putting the corals themselves in maybe a higher flow or a little bit more par, but granted it's the bottom of the tank, 250 par on average, and I try to avoid the dead spots. It's pretty much the best I can do for these colonies. Um, I don't have any more tanks. The frag tanks are full. The the um, anemone tank is completely uh, packed full of coral. So I'm trying to give it the best environment to live. Uh, maybe I'll figure out something to like hang it on the back wall or something in the future. But either way, I did put a piece of it back at the bottom of the tank, not quite in its original spot. So hopefully we'll at least get a little bit more growth. And then uh, if it starts to be an issue again, maybe I can figure something else out. But either way, um, I didn't really save a lot of this colony. As you guys can see, there's probably a handful of frags and it's been a few days since I fragged and nothing has died yet. So knock on wood, um, I'm happy that I can at least save what I can. But I did lose about six months worth of growth. Um, that's just, that's unfortunate. It's a very beautiful coral. Don't don't ask me the name of it. It's one I picked up from a subscriber. I don't, don't know the name of it. If you guys have ever checked on my website, if it, <laughs> it's kind of funny because people are like, you don't have the right name on your website. Listen, it looks green. It's got blue polyps. So it's a green blue polyp coral. That's it. If you like it, buy it. If you don't, 
I don't know. I don't, I don't really care about the names. It's not a big deal. But uh, it's just funny that came to mind. But either way, um, I don't know what it's called. Um, maybe I can get a picture up here at some point. You guys can tell me what you think it is. But either way, it's a beautiful coral. It's a plating acropora. It looks good when it's not stressed out. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't look that good. So with that said, I did get a few frags. Everything seems to be okay. And um, yeah, just kind of thankful. So with that said, guys, I think that's it for the video. I've been rambling for, I don't know, like eight minutes now. It's probably long enough. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys like these types of videos. If you do, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. Um, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, head over to my website, fishofhex.com. There's a ton of stuff going on there. If you guys want to support my other channel, which is Hex Jiu Jitsu, if you guys know over the last couple of years, I've been hammering Brazilian Jiu Jitsu really hard, been competing her quite a bit. Uh, finally got promoted. Uh, it's a long story. We'll talk about it in another video, but um, I actually am uploading all my competition videos uh, on that channel. I'm going to do some guides and stuff. I get a lot of questions asking about Jiu Jitsu, so maybe I'll start uploading some content regarding that. But either way, it's kind of my journey, something I can look back on over the next, you know, in 10 years from now, kind of see where I started. And it's also a good place to document some of my failures and my successes. So if you want to support the channel or the other channel, uh, head over there. I will put a link in the description. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you being here. And I'll see you next time. All right. Peace.